will probably be more fun to review. Probably be more fun to review. This, 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 this is the most mature audience's only shit you've ever heard. Period. From Boston. From Boston. Broadcasting all over the world. The world. Send the soy boys home. Cause we ain't gonna sugarcoat shit. Drop down, I'm give it to you. This, this is, this is. The Joe Cronin Show. Now, now, here's Joe here's Cronin. Joe Cronin. Joe Cronin. Yo, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to the show. I am so sorry to everybody for not being live earlier, but I had so much to do around the house, man. I wanted to, you know, clean up my house, hang out with my kids a little bit. You know what I mean? I had a little bit of a day here, so I meant to be live earlier for all you guys, but instead we're going to go live now. I'm going to take a break. AEW is going to come on. We're going to come back for the AEW review later. So if you guys... um are around tonight. I just want to remind you I will be live tonight for the review of AEW Wrestling. So be here with me if you can be, you sexy beast. I have a lot to talk about here. Uh, I think. I think I have a lot. No, okay. Well, I don't know. I, I might have a lot to talk about. You know, I'm, that might be a lie. You know, will, will, will we be live for 45 minutes, an hour? I don't know. Caveman Austin, how you been, man? TKO Rising, how you doing? I want to shout out all the patrons on Patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. If you are a patron on Patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show, it's a mouthful. I do want to say thank you guys. And uh, I did put up a little Joe Cronin extra clip. In the future, I'm going to be putting these up for 15 minutes to 25 minute spurts. Uh, Colonel Stutters and uh, Ghost from the Coast were the only ones who were able to get their questions in in time. Uh, and I did talk about those there. So go listen to that if you'd like to. Colonel Stutters had a great idea for a video, and so I talked about that a little bit. Uh, but I am going to uh, ask you guys for help as far as that video goes as well. Um, so I would ask you, I'll ask you later about it if I can remember. Um, I want to do the top five best moments of 2022 in wrestling, if we can actually find those. And I also want to do the top five worst uh, moments in wrestling of the year 2022. And believe it or not, in both of those categories, I actually think there's some things that are on both lists. You know what I mean? I'll just give you one example. For one example, Vince McMahon leaving WWE. I think that was probably one of the best moments in w in wrestling history this year. But I think it's also one of the worst moments in, in another way. So like, that could be on both lists. That was a great idea by Colonel Stutters. Um, it's on my little podcast there. I talked about it. But I'm going to make videos. I'm going to do videos on that. So... Thank you to Colonel Stutters for not only uh, coming up with... I mean, he came up with a great idea. I mean, for a video. You know what I mean? I think that'd be a great video to do, and I'm going to do it. I'm going to do both of them. You got the donations coming in. I see that. If you guys want to donate, the link is down below, or it's up above in the chat, pinned, whatever. Do whatever you want. We'll be here for a little bit. 
Um, I'm, I'm hopefully going to be here for your a lot of your drives home or your, your ending work day. You're just getting home, whatever it is. We get Dennis Eckersley of the Red Sox. Dude, this story is nuts. I have to read this to you because it's so insane. Like, dude, first of all, I love Dennis Eckersley. As a pitcher, I loved him, and he's great. In, he was great in the bro uh, broadcast booth for the Red Sox. And I know this is not the best time to go live, right? The best time to go live is normally, like, after 6 o'clock and somewhere between 10 a.m. and 1 p.m. You know, this is a horrible time to go live. People are just leaving work or in the middle of something or whatever. This has traditionally been a poor time to go live. I know this, but I'm going live anyway because I wanted to cover this. Um, I meant to be live earlier today. It would have been much better to be live around 1 p.m. and that and that sort of thing. But I, I, I hope that and, you know, obviously the YouTube gods in my head said, don't go live right now. It's a waste of time to go live at 5 p.m. It is stupid to do that. But I just I just want to do it, man. So uh, here we are. Uh, dude, this is really fucking crazy with Dennis Eckersley. Like, we're going to go into this Dennis Eckersley thing. I'm going to read you the story, and it's it's nuts. Like, it really is kind of insane. Um and I'm also just going to post real quickly that we're live because I didn't do that yet. If you guys can help out, we're just getting started here. The alerts are just maybe going out now. Uh, hit that like button and stick the thumb directly up my ass. Um, and let everybody know that we're here. Tweet it out, message it out, whatever you want to do. Um, and we'll talk about breaking news. We'll talk about the news. I'm going to show you why the wrestling news sucks. I'm actually going to show you the wrestling news today. And I'm going to go over it. I'm just going to tell you how much of a don't give a fuck I have about it, about the wrestling news. Just terrible. I want to thank Todd Fair for coming back to Patreon in the $100 spot. Uh, let's go to, oh, no. I just, oh, shit. Oh, fuck me, dude. I just closed out of, uh, oh, my God, bro. I'm a fucking idiot. I just closed out of labs. Uh, let me get back into labs here. Uh, okay. Do a little basketball Bizarro. dance off the concrete. I mean, I'm just so sick of you little meth head devil worshippers. I'll be honest, I'd like to take a big bite out of your face. My dolphins are scaring me after a four-game losing streak, and Tua needs to leave already. He already got another concussion. Wow. He needs to retire and Told focus you. on his health. Hopefully he, wow. we do pick up Lamar Jackson next season. He needs to retire. Jesus Christ, Pajaro. Jesus, talk about giving up on... Uh... Good lord, bro. A tu tua tunga tua luga booga luga dua. Um, you want him to retire? Jesus Christ, bro. I, I, I oh, listen. I, I just, I knew the Dolphins weren't going to be. You know, I didn't know. I thought that was very close, but I did pick the Buffalo Bills at the beginning of the season. You know what I mean? Um, so Pajaro, I appreciate the dollar, man. But yeah, you're the Dolphins are fucked, bro. Hey, Bullfrog is a moron. Oh. <laughs> Me, Joe. <laughs> Joe, since pro wrestling is so bad right now, you might as well just review college wrestling. It'll probably be more fun to review. No, you know, I, I'm probably I'm probably going to do some other things. Um, I am going to mix in some new things on the channel, but I'm still going to do wrestling, but I'm going to mix in some other things on the channel as well uh, and, and do, you know, what I can. So, no, I'm still going to, you know, keep going. But, yeah, this was a bad year. Uh, for wrestling. We've seen it dwindle down step by step by step by step by step by step. Just so much dwindling down. We're going to talk about a lot of things today. You know, there's a lot to talk about. You know, there's, there's, I mean, I've been getting fucking trolled up the yin yang, which is always hilarious to get trolled. But uh, we'll talk about why I'm getting trolled um, <laughs> with, the, with this ridiculous stuff uh, in a minute. Um, I'm always getting trolled, but I just don't ever care. But uh, this one I happen to, I think is funny, and I'm going to mention it um, potentially in a minute because I did get sent these clips. Very funny clips. Um, I want to thank Thomas. Uh, Thomas for becoming a patron on Patreon. Without you guys' support on Patreon and here on YouTube, I could not do this. So thank you. You know that. Um, but I want to look at the wrestling news real quick. You know, uh, just because it's it's this bad. You know what I mean? Like, let me just explain why I haven't done... It's like, I can't bring myself to do a wrestling news video solo. Now, I'm going to get into the Dennis Eckersley thing with his daughter in a second. This is fucking crazy. I'm going to read in a minute. But first, just skim the wrestling news real quick. And uh, I will uh, go over uh, donations in a minute, super chats and donations. If you guys have them, uh, drop them, and I will respond to them in a minute. 
So if you want, super chat down below. Uh, donation link is up above. You know what the link is. Um, all the donation amounts are listed in the description box below. Just expand it. I recommend the 999 Scissor Me. 1225 Christmas Leah. How about Leah being on the show the other day? That was fun to have her on the show. Sith Negan dropped a thousand dollar bomb. It was crazy. Shout out to Sith. Goes from the coast. Um, Rhea Ripley. So let's look at this. Rhea Ripley reacts to new WWE Dominic Mysterio t shirt. Wow. That's fucking riveting news. I can't wait to see Rhea Ripley's reaction to Dominic Mysterio's t-shirt dude that's the rest that's the news that's the wrestling news that's what we're talking about fuck yourself all right that's fucking retarded that's retarded that's the news Rhea Ripley Rhea Ripley guys Rhea Ripley reacts to Dominic Mysterio's new t-shirt wow that's the news I'm here for let me tell you Booker T clarifies recent comments about Jade Cargill in WWE. First of all, that is so ambiguous. You know why? Because there's nothing really here at all. Like, someone had to hear Booker T and hear Booker T be like, well, man, what I said was I didn't mean that she was terrible. What I was saying was what she did that night was terrible. But her potential is unbelievable. You know, that that's the news. That's how bad the news is. That's number two. That is the number two article. On, on Wrestling Inc. And, and there's other websites, too. They're all like this, for the most part. It's just garbage. Just garbage. And it's not Wrestling Inc.'s fault. It's just there's no wrestling news. This is what I'm trying to tell you. It's dead right now. It's just dead. I'd say the most buzzworthy thing that I would click on is, like, Cody Rhodes' information. And even that is, like, just, like, whatever. Like, you know, at this point, who cares? So just wrestling is so dead. Like th This is number three. Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins topped the bumps list of top 10 matches of 2022. Okay. <laughs> like, all right. Number four in the news, wow, Lance Archer. Dude, Lance Archer is fucking news, guys. Did you know that? Lance Archer discusses future goals in AEW. What are the goals? To not fucking lose again every second? What are the goals to stop saying everybody dies when you lose 70% of your matches? Everybody dies. Everybody dies. Everybody dies. You're like Ryback, but less entertaining. You know what I mean? Bro, why not sign Ryback? I know Ryback is a retard asshole, okay? I get it. Ryback is a retard asshole. I get that. I get it. But I appreciate Ryback a thousand times more because he's an entrepreneur, which rhymes with manure. He, he gets angry at people. He makes stuff up about people and attacks people. You know, he's got a funny voice, you know? Yeah, you want to make something fuck up on me? I'll fuck your mother. You know, he's funny. He's a dickhead goofball. His head looks like an egg, right? He's got mangled teeth. At least Ryback is entertaining. Even if he's making shit up about people and being a bad person, that's entertaining at least. What does Lance Archer do? Everybody, everybody, everybody dies. Everybody dies. Everybody dies. I'm so sorry to Lance Archer. If he ever sees my videos and he feels bad, I he seems like a nice guy. But it's not me, dude. It's your character. You can't argue with this. I'm sorry. I know it would make me upset too if I heard this about myself. But the company, you know, you say everybody dies, you lose 70% of your matches. This is the fourth article on the on the wrestling news website. Lance Archer discusses future goals. Who gives a fuck about his goals? Everything he says is bullshit. Everybody dies. No, they don't. I'm going to kill you. No, you didn't. I'm going to win. Mostly time, you don't. You know, you look. You got a big fucking red ferret thing in your head. Like, there's really not a lot going on here, bro. You know what I mean? So, dude, it just sucks. It just sucks. He sucks. And he's the fourth thing in the news, man. He's the fourth thing in the news. Lance Archer, the fourth fucking article in the news. Here's the fifth thing in the news. You know what this is? Zelina Vega. Oh, boy. Zelina Vega teases reveal of her latest tattoo. Wow. Dude, that's the, that's the fucking fifth thing in the news. The fifth thing in the news is Zelina Vega is going to tease her tattoo. 
Dude, are we fucking retarded? Dude, what is this? <laughs> Joe, why you like what? What's going on, bro? Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Yo, I, I, like, what, dude, bro, th- th- that's, that's the fourth, what? I don't give a fuck about Zelina Vegas tattoos. I don't give a shit about her tattoos, bro. Does anyone care about her tattoos? Is that really, the, that's the news story? Zelina Vegas tattoos are the news story. Dude, the dead serious. How can that be? And I just want to let everybody know that, yes, I will be live tonight, okay? Just letting you know. So for the people that are wondering, yes, I'll be live with the AEW review. You may not get an alert that I'm live later because I'll be live again in like four hours, right, after AEW tonight around 10 o'clock. So just letting you know, I will be live right here as soon as AEW ends. You may or may not get an alert. So just be prepared. That I'll be live. Just come to my channel. I'll be live. Jump on in. Be a part of the show. All right? Just letting you know that I will be here. I just want you to know that. I know that it's, you know, it's a little messed up. Um, Let's see here. Um, All right. How do I hit this thing? Um, hold on a second. Um, uh, hold on, I'm looking for, I'm looking for, uh, John's, John had a question earlier, I think, uh, James had a question, rather, in the chat, and I missed it, I'm sorry, I'm trying to find it for him, but I don't know, man, I might have lost it, bro. I might have lost it. My bad if I lost it, dude. I'm sorry about that. I'm lo- I was I'm looking for it right now, but dude, I don't know. Um I will have an open Skype in a few minutes if people want to Skype in. I will open up the phone lines. It's been a while. Uh but yeah, I will open up the phone lines uh for some people uh if you do want to be a part of it. So, we'll see if we can get you in here. Um let me see. My bad, Brad. Okay. Yeah, I don't I don't I don't care about her tattoos. You know what I mean? I don't care if she has tattoos up her asshole. I don't care. You know, I just don't. Um, let's go to the donations and see what uh anybody might be saying. Uh thank you to Gerald Armstrong. Thank you to Pisharo for the donations. I got more. I got to get to this Dennis Eckersley story in a second because this is crazy, bro. I'm going to read this story to you. It's nuts, bro. Former Red Sox pitcher Dennis Eckersley. I love the guy. Love him as an announcer. Loved him as a pitcher. You know, I, like I am sh- like I don't know what's going on with his family or why this is going down, but the article is nuts. Like when you guys hear this article about Dennis Eckersley, this is friggin' crazy. Oh no, baby. Ladies and gentlemen, the fecal matter is on the floor. The fecal matter is on the floor. But it's okay, I am a horse. The fecal matter is on the floor. It's okay, I am a horse. The fecal matter is on the floor. It's okay, I am a horse. The fecal matter is on the floor. It's okay. The fecal matter is on the floor. It's okay. Ladies and gentlemen, this horse is dropping a deuce. It's Chief Wahoo. Thank you, Chief, for donating 20 bucks, bro. What's up? 
It's my birthday today, but my horse said don't eat USOB, so I did. Oh Victory my god. Hand. P.S. Packers got lucky AF. I know, right? Dude, the Packers <laughs> dude, the Packers went and beat the fish. You know why? It's because it snowed in Miami or whatever. You know, they flipped the fucking script over there. They flipped the damn script. Um, dude, Chief Wahoo, happy birthday. How crazy is that on your birthday you send me a donation? You know what I mean? And you're not the first. A lot of people do this. A lot of people send me donations on their birthday, which is just, you know, Maybe I should maybe I should like refund it with like an extra twenty to you, like to give you a birthday present. I don't know, but I'm not. You know what I mean? That would be if I was a really good person. You know what I mean? I would do that. But instead, I'm just like, thanks for the money. You know, um, but no, that's uh, dude. It's your birthday. I I feel bad. I do feel a little weird. But uh, happy birthday. Happy birthday, brother, Chief Wahoo. You know, I love you. Be birthday. Happy birthday, Chief Wahoo. Happy birthday, Chief Wahoo. Happy birthday to you. I would suck you in the bathroom. I would suck you in the trailer park. I would suck you off at midnight. Alright, I'm sorry. Uh, Chief Wahoo, thank you for dropping that, man. Once again, I will be live tonight with the AEW review, live as soon as AEW ends. But we are going live right now because I meant to go live today at noon. Didn't get to do that, so here we are right now. I hope you're traveling on your way home from work. You got home from work. Maybe you're not working. Maybe you're on disability. I don't know what's going on for you. But I do appreciate Chief Wahoo on his birthday uh, dropping $20, and that is the largest donation of the stream, so... Uh, Chief Wahoo, uh, might as well put him up here on his birthday. Let's spell it right, not chef, right? Chief Wahoo, $20, and it's his birthday. Nothing beats your birthday today. I wonder how old he is. I hope you get naked and run down the streets. By the way, I also want to shout out Jake DeMarco, because the other day Jake DeMarco said something that I think a lot of you guys would be interested in. I actually did not catch it until uh, recently, and that was, if I can find it here, um, let me see if I can find it for you guys, Super Chats, um, I want to say, um, I also want to shout out over the last couple of days the people that have been donating really quickly just to run through the list real quick. Before we get to this comment, I want to show you guys and the Dennis Eckersley story. Uh, but we had a lot of support from, like, you know, MTA. Oh, you just donated. Chief Wahoo, Allison Tuckwab, Luis Money, Jersey City Boys, Danny MT, Smitsta, Allison, Todd Fair, $100, man. Thank you, Allison. Uh, and Todd Fair. Uh, Allison Tuckwab, two hundred and ninety nine dollars. I monetized this the other night. Unfucking believable. Uh, Alex Oli, I mean Brian Drew Bar. Allison has been just insanely supporting the show. Red Comet Man, Alex Oli, Randy Viper, Mario Rodriguez, the Goon. Um, just so many people. Arushin Chu, everybody, man. Thank you guys for that. But this is not what I was looking for. I was looking for, um, I was looking for the super thanks stuff. Because there was a super thanks the other day on a video, and I don't know if I can find it or not, but I, I'm looking for it now. I, I I thought there was a way I could just sort of see the super thankses, but I, I don't I don't see it. Oh yeah, here it is. Here's the one I wanted to find. Before I get to the Dennis Eckersley Red Sox story. It is from Jake DeMarco. Jake DeMarco uh leaving us a little comment here. He donated five dollars to to make sure this got seen. Oh, by the way, I'll pin this. I should pin this a while ago. Merry Christmas, Jake says. I miss all of you more than you know, especially my broski from another hoski, the one and only Joe freaking Cronin. Um, I'm hoping to join up with Joe soon enough to finally give some updates and catch up with everybody. I hope you all have a great holiday. Stay sexy, Jake DeMarco. So Jake is still, you know, ever 
you know, ever teasing that he's they'll be here eventually. But obviously, with all his medical issues, you know what I mean. I mean, he's a he literally was told he may not live much longer, um, you know. And so he's got a million doctors' appointments to keep the car running, you know, keep the body running. And in between that, spending all the time with his family. So, like, you know, what I mean, you got you can understand why, you know, the guy is very, very busy, and any minute he has available, he he spends it with his family. You know what I mean? Obviously, you know, it's like he's he does a lot of taking care of kids. His is his his family's kids he he watches as well um you know probably disability stuff is you know his wife has to work so very busy you know they are over there um and that's why like you can't even you know but he has been trying to get to me and then there's been days where I'm at work and he's like hey I might be around but I'm at work you know sort of thing so he's we're trying you know to get uh sexy pants back and that may happen soon, but. And I know a lot of people. Let me shout out to you guys. A lot of people on disability, ailments, things like that. I will see you guys. Uh, yeah, and, I'll, and I, I will be on tonight for AEW um, Dynamite. So for the people wondering, yes, I'll be live after Dynamite. You may not get an alert, though, because I went live here. So just make sure you guys look for me. Uh, happy birthday, Chief Wally. Shit bum. Comes a shit bum. MTA 427 dropping the $5 super chat party. MTA, thank you so much, man. Any guys, if you can, hit that like button and stick the thumb directly up the Cronin's ass. Okay? So please stick the thumb, you know, directly up my ass if you can. All right? And um, we'll proceed. We'll get weird. Um, that being said, I do want to say another thing. I have a major heart on right now. No, I'm just kidding. Um, MTA, thank you. So let's go to Dennis Eckersley's story. This is so weird, bro. Listen to this. I'm going to read this article. Listen to how this article goes. And there's, you know, Dennis Eckersley right there. Let me see if I can get this picture up, too. This is like a picture of the... And, yeah, some people knew about this story, but they didn't know it was Dennis Eckersley's daughter. Oh, this picture's all warped and shit. I don't know what's up with that. but So maybe we can't use that picture. I don't know. It's all warped. Is this the picture we want? No, this is Leah and Tommy. I don't know what's up with this. Leah put some stockings on her legs last night and woke me up with only that on. It was amazing. I love my wife. Anyway, um, the daughter of Hall of Fame pitcher Dennis Eckersley is facing charges for allegedly leaving her newborn in the freezing cold in the woods, reports the Boston Globe and other news outlets. Alexandra Eckersley was arrested early Monday morning after police responded to a report that a, that a woman had given birth in a tent in the woods near Manchester, New Hampshire. What the fuck is that, bro? You know what I mean? That's fucking bizarre. Eckersley, 26, told police she didn't know she was pregnant. Her newborn was born premature and rushed to Catholic Medical Center in Manchester before being airlifted to Dartmouth Hitchcock Medical Center in Lebanon. Eckersley also told police she was giving she was living she's living in the woods inside of a makeshift tent with a man named George. <laughs> what the fuck, bro? There's a Hall of Fame pitcher, Dennis Eckersley, his daughter, is living in the fucking woods. What? And I think that's where the problem is. I don't think it's that she, like, was trying to, like, go out into the woods and hide her baby and shit like that. Yeah, the 420 donation is still available, meow, meow. 420 dono, it's always a hot one. Um, smoke weed every day. Um, no, so I, she's in the woods giving birth to a, to a baby. It's fucking crazy. Um, so when asked why she didn't bring the baby with her, Right? Out of the woods. 
um, when leaving the woods, she responded, "What do they tell you when a plane when a plane goes down? Save yourself first. Police wrote. So the police were like, why didn't you bring the baby out of the woods with you when you gave birth to the baby? And she said that, well, you know, when when being rescued in an emergency like this, you know, they say save yourself first. I mean, that's fucking bizarre. I mean, like, dude, if I I mean, I don't know. I mean, I guess if I was like dire needs, maybe you'd leave the baby to go get help really quickly. I guess, but like, I just couldn't do it, man. Even if it was illogical, right? Even if it was like, it's going to slow me down to carry a baby and, you know, I'm bleeding everywhere and shit's going crazy and whatever's wrong. I'm still bringing the kid with me because all I would think is that an animal's going to eat the baby or something. You know, I don't know. But according to the affidavit, Eckersley admitted to using marijuana and cocaine days before the baby's birth. Oh, boy. She also allegedly lied to police about the baby's whereabouts, causing first responders to spend 73 minutes searching for the child. She was charged with felony reckless conduct and endangering the welfare of a child and also faces countless second-degree assaults with extreme indifference and falsifying physical evidence. Eckersley is the daughter of Dennis Eckersley and his second wife, Nancy. She told authorities that she and Dennis offered their daughter drug treatment for years, but she refused according to WCVB. New Hampshire is one of the seven states, including Massachusetts, with safe haven laws allowing a mother to leave their newborn at fire stations or with first responders without facing criminal charges. The baby must be no more than seven days old. Eckersley was arraigned uh, from her hospital bed on Tuesday, and her bail was set at $3,000. Oh, boy. An outreach worker who knew Eckersley uh, told Globe is uh, Eckersley is suffering from mental health issues. Um, it's a whole messy picture what we're seeing happen to this young woman, and the baby is very, very bad. It's but it's indicative of a much larger picture and a problem. Yeah, I, you know I don't do that. Is sick, like and weird. But obviously she's got mental problems. You know what I mean? You don't leave a baby out like that. You know what I mean? Pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. Um, It's just a sick story, a fucking crazy story, a fucking weird story, and uh, yeah, a little bit weird. I don't know, dude. My wife got me a uh, coffee, so I'm off. I'm off my goddamn rocker right now. I mean, I drank a lot of coffee here, man. Probably too much, to be honest. Too much coffee. You know what I mean? Very strange. But again, yeah, my my mistake. I, I wanted to be live earlier today, so I would have. Uh, I would have. Uh, I was thinking about streaming from the car. It's been a while, you know. But because I, I had to come on late because I was so busy. You know, obviously, I will be live with, uh, you know, AEW tonight. But I just want to keep mentioning: Is she a millennial? I mean, yeah. I mean, dude, I'm a technically I'm a millennial, right? They call me a millennial. I'm 38. I mean, I think I'm like Gen. I feel like I'm Gen X or whatever it is, but or maybe not. I I don't even know anymore what these are. All I know is I was born in the fucking 80s. You know, what I mean, I feel like millennials is like, like they give, um, they 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 sort of like give a bad rap to the millennials, but it's, isn't it the Gen Z people really that are the problem? You know, it's all just stupid titles. I just know most people, but I know people that are like my, you know, my age who are, who are nuts as well. So it is like this age bracket, but it's mostly younger people, right? The, the nutty people to me typically are like from about 20, from like 21 years old to about, 30, right? From 21 to 30, there seems to be nutcases in there. Do you know what I mean? But, you know, after 30, it starts to get better. And below 21 seems to get better, too. Because it seems like the younger kids are just like, this is retarded. They don't think this way. Probably because they haven't been indoctrinated in the colleges. So I'm betting that that's what it is. I'm betting that most people in the 60s and 70s and shit 
I mean, I'm sorry, in the, uh, you know, most people who are in their, you know, teenage years think that, that they're retarded because they're normal. They haven't been brainwashed yet by the colleges. So I'm betting that that's what it is. I don't know who leaves a baby in the woods. Probably a Biden vote. But I don't, I know, I don't want to assume anything. And, uh, you know, I don't know. That's a sick thing, bro. But there's no, like I said, I showed the wrestling news earlier and we laughed at it and there just is, there is no good news. There, there are some new articles popping up now, right now, actually. Um, but dude, even the, the news articles that just popped up, look, here's another one. Possible update on Jeff Hardy. What the fuck does that mean? That's the news headline? Dude, that means this is shit. Because you would say huge update on Jeff Hardy or, or update on Jeff Hardy. Or something like that. Dude, possible update on Jeff Hardy? What the fuck kind of news stories are there today? The WWE news and the AEW news, it's retarded. The wrestling news is literally out the fucking window. And here's one of the top trending news stories right now. And look at it, it's negative. WWE Raw ratings hit record low for the best of 2022 show. Well, no shit. It wasn't even really a show. That's why. It wasn't a real fucking show, bro. That's why they all time low. There's something going on. Oh my god! Space. Oh There's shit! Something going on. Allison Takwab! There's something weird gotta happen. Oh my god, here we go! Things are kinda happening. What the fuck is happening? Aliens. Extraterrestrials. They gave me a shot. Nanotechnology. I'm not me. Oh, oh, you're not you la, la, la. Uh, oh, I'm fucking crazy Split personality Scott McKinnon la, 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 I am glad that the Packers scratching, clawing some announcer said Santa Claus must have came and helped him and made those other teams lose. Now they only have to deal with two teams, Lions and, and Vikings, and I think they're in the playoffs, I think. I mean, they, it could happen now, Allison. I mean, Jesus Christ, you guys beat uh, the Vikings. The uh, I mean, I mean, rather the Dolphins. Can't believe it. Santa Claus came to friggin' Miami the other night, Allison. Um, I don't know, man. I mean, the Green Bay Packers, I mean, this is really surprising. I mean, who would think the Green Bay Packers could have a shot? Who would think the Jets could have some kind of shot still? Who would think the Patriots could have some kind of shot still? I mean, it's just kind of crazy, you know, the fact that these are still there. Uh, Allison, thank you so much for the forty nine ninety nine Alien Man uh, donation. Uh, Skype lines are open. Uh, Skype lines are open, folks, for you tonight. 339, I, I believe the number still works. If it doesn't, let me know. 339-226-6610. Skype lines open. Donation lines open. Feel free to drop something and uh, like Allison just did. Man, Allison dropping a bomb. Uh, well, I'll call it a bomb on an afternoon. Forty nine ninety nine is a big drop on a uh, one-hour afternoon stream. You know what I'm saying? We will be live tonight with the AEW review. Skype Danny Deadly. If you would like to Skype me, add me on Skype Danny Deadly on, on Skype. Um, I had to make that name because uh, obviously Joe Cronin was getting bombarded with you know things uh, a long time ago. So just that's my alternative name on there. Add me on Skype. Go ahead. And... Uh, Call 339-226-6610, whichever you'd like to do. Skype lines are are open. We're going to address a few things here, man. Live on the show. Give a call up. Let me know what's up. I see you hit me up in messages, Bullfrog. I see that shit. I see that shit. Uh, Allison, you may actually get your Christmas wish, man, because... Maybe the Packers are coming. You know what I mean? Maybe the Packers are coming, bro. Packers might be coming. And if they do, um, well, I don't think they'll make it that far. <laughs> so if they do, I don't think they'll make it that far. That's just my, you know, that's just my guess. 
That's just my opinion. I don't think they'll make it far. Just saying. Thank you, Allison Tukwa. Much appreciated. We will be live tonight. It's Wednesday night. The AEW Dynamite review coming in. And uh, I'm hoping, that obviously, that AEW is... Somebody said recently in a chat, I think it was um, it was a long-time listener, and he, and he said something like, Joe, do you ever say anything positive about wrestling? And, and I wanted to say to him, man, I don't think... Do you watch my reviews? Because, I mean, like, I say positive things every single Wednesday night. So I don't think you watch my show. I got to be honest. I know you're an OG and, and whatever else, but it's like, dude, I don't. I, if you say that to me, I don't think you watch my show. Do you know what I mean? Like, I just don't think you actually watch my show if you say that. Because I say positive things every Wednesday night about AEW. And I would say that I said positive things about WrestleMania. You know what I mean? I thought it was, you know, a lot of fun. You know? Oh. Um. And I, I do, I will talk about the, the Mia Yim thing. I mean, I know that they got hell for this, and this is a bit old, but... I you know I brought it up the other day and you guys a lot of comments on it you know to be honest um you know it just was it was something that was like well it's Keith Lee's uh that's Keith Lee's girl but uh you know a lot of people a lot of people trying to say like oh she's cheating on Keith Lee well first of all listen just because she took a picture hugging him climbing on his waist you know, whatever you want to say or whatever, doesn't mean that she's cheating on Keith Lee. You know, just because she's hugging or, you know, grinding on Austin Theory or whatever this is, this picture does not mean she's cheating on Keith Lee. You know, let's There's obviously... Oh, oh, my God! Space. There's something going on up in this place. There's something weird gotta happen and strange gotta happen. She's here again! Allison Chakra! Oh my god, you're done, man! You're fucking done, man! I'm not me! You're not you! Allison Tuckwa with the big support! I don't know if I was dreaming this or if it was reality. I don't want to start rumors or get my facts wrong, but I thought someone said the scene from a shared all that they pushed Owen Hart instead of on Hart coming down on his own. Yeah, you know, there's been a long time theory about that, Allison. Uh, you know, that seems very conspiracy to me. I think the the real answer is that the WWE attempted to save money. You know, Occam's razor, right? Like, so the rumor has always been that, you know, Vince McMahon had Owen Hart killed or whatever. Allison Tuckwab, thank you for that forty nine ninety nine bomb again times two. Um, But Allison, yeah, so th there's been the rumor that, you know, somebody pushed him or, or, you know, cut the belt on him up top. There's been the rumor that he was killed on purpose. Uh, then there's the, it was an accident. In my opinion, it was an it was an accident, but it wasn't in a way, right? In my opinion, they changed companies, right? They changed the company that did the the stunt apparatus. They went with a cheap alternative. They had a professional who is really good at this, and this alternative that they chose to swap out, his way of doing it was ill advised and was not the industry standard. And the guy was, you know, kind of janky and whatever. And that's why the harness broke. So it's the classic, classic tale that they cheaped out on a safety thing like this. All to basically save money. And it ended up costing Owen Hart his life. It wasn't the idea that he went up to do the stunt that was the problem. The problem was they cut corners to save money with a new guy. That's the problem for me. 
You know what I mean? Shout out to the aliens, man. Shout out to all the aliens out there. We're getting ready, man. You know something? You know? Let's go. Hmm. I I do see the Everybody Lies Man account. I do see the uh, clips. You send me clips on Skype under this name, Alien Documentaries. I'm like, I don't know if you're, I don't know who you are. I don't know if you're him or what, who, what troll person you are. Um, I got the clips you send me. I understand. I, I get the clips you're sending me. Let me see what, I'll respond to this, I guess. I don't know who this person is. Let's, let's see. Hold on. All right, let me listen to this. Let's hear this clip. You, dude, you are going to mention this in the chat all day long until I mention this. I know you are. I got the clips. I heard I heard what you said. I'm not really worried about it, dude. I'm not worried about someone randomly talking shit. You know what I mean? I'm not that worried about it. Listen, the bottom line is the guy is obviously misunderstood. Obviously, somebody reached out to him and made up lies about me and whatever. I'm not concerned about it. This is so old school news. It's unbelievable. Do you know what I mean? Do you guys want me to address this guy? Should I address this guy or not? Let me put up a poll. Should I address this troll and his defamation? I don't even think it's like defamation. I feel like it's like the guy don't even... He doesn't really know the truth, so it's like he's just... I don't even know who this guy is, to be honest. So I'm not really worried about it. It's just goofy. It's just something to talk about, I guess. I'm not really, like, worried about it. It's just, you know, just somebody's really obviously told him the wrong thing. Um, I don't know, bro. I'll put up a poll. If the poll, If the people want me to address it, I'll address it. The bottom line is the guy said this on some Twitch stream... You know what I mean? On a Twitch stream for like 15 people to hear. Nobody cares. I certainly don't care. It's not true. It's ridiculous. So whatever. Like we all know it's not true because the, the proof, I have the videos on my channel. You know what I mean? You can go, I can literally show you the videos on my channel to show you what really happened if, if you cared. But so it's just some dude looking for, I don't know. It's either some guy who is, okay, so it's two things. It's either the guy's looking for clout or something like that which I don't even know why you'd come looking for it from me, but whatever. Or number two, he's misunderstood. Someone's told him the wrong thing or the wrong lie or the wrong thing, and he's reacting. So it's one of the two. I don't really care that much, but I will, you know, I'll mention it. I got your clips, bro. I, you fucking, who knows who you really are. You're probably the guy who told the guy. You're probably the guy, because this is what people do. Guys, let me explain something. This is how sick people are, especially in the wrestling community. It's got something to do something to do with the wrestling community. I, I don't know why, but it's like do people like go and they like they tell somebody that somebody did something that they didn't do. They get that guy to react. They clip that guy reacting to it. Then they come to somebody like me and they tell me that the guy did something. Then I say something, then they go to that guy and they say this guy just said this about you. And then they just jerk off. You know what I mean? Like, but like, I'm, I know what's going on. So it's like, I usually don't feed into it because I get it. It's like, you're just a fucking psycho stirring shit. You're like, the, you know, there's, there's jokers everywhere on YouTube. They love it too. They, they're enjoying it. They love it. It's their life. You know, they're fucking retarded. I get it. You know what I mean? But Jesus Christ, bro. Um, I will address it if the poll, um, once the poll reaches maybe 50, 60 votes or 50 votes, we'll say. I have the clips of, of this and I will react to it. Nobody really here is going to care that much. It's not really a big thing. It's not a big thing that no, you know, anybody's really going to care that much about, but, um, it'll just be something to talk about. Let's give them something to talk about. And, uh, let's also listen to this. You just made the list. You just made the list. Um, Bullfrog, please stop messaging me. Just call the show, bro. 
I just get, you know, I just got this sent to me. Bullfrog messaged me this. Merry Christmas, Joe from Froggy. Well, I mean, you know. That's that's adorable. You know what? I mean, I would like to know who has the bigger chin. That chin is, bro, like what the fuck? What is happening here? That is something right there. I mean, I, I listen. I know I was getting a bit tubby at one point, too. I was getting pretty tubby also, but Jesus Christ, bro. I've got a nice neck. Would you like to see my gigantic neck? Look at my neck. Imagine, no, imagine if you didn't shave. Would any hair grow there? Shardy Janetti. Would any hair grow there? Right there. Bro. Yo, this neck is dripping, brother. This neck is dripping, dude. Dude, drop that fucking beat for this neck, dude. Look at this, bro. Look at this neck, bro. You talk about, I mean, this is a chin and a neck. You better have respect for my neck compared to yours, you fucking wet. Whatever that song was that I made a while ago. Like, look at this. Is this the song right here? No. Look at my neck, look at my neck, you gotta give it some bum respect. Look at my neck, look at my neck, look at my neck, look at my neck. Oh, it's so fat, it hang like that, it hit the floor like splat. Look at that, when that hair grows, you can't see it no more, it disappears. My name is Bullfrog and I got a bullfrog neck. My neck is so hard, cool, it's got its own zip code, yo. My neck, respect, my neck. Respect, better respect my neck, what the heck, look at this, oh my god, I'm a wreck, yo, I might fuck my niece, might fuck the cops, here I go, I got swatted again, go ahead and swap me again, you will be my friend, yeah, look at my big fat neck, my neck looks like a pair of breasts, smushed against on my chest, my neck don't look like the rest, it's got its own headrest, it's got its own chest rest, you cannot see my chin, where did it go? It hid away in my neck hole. Yeah, look at my chin. Look at my fucking asshole, yo. You can't see my chin. It devours into my neck. Yeah, look at my neck. Look at my neck. Look at my neck. You nerd. Look at my neck. Look at my neck. Look at my neck. Nerd. Look at my neck. Look at my neck. Look at my neck. Look at my ribbit. Ribbit. Frog, what is? Why would you? Why would you send me this photo, bro? Why would you send me this photo? I mean, I, it's very sweet. I mean, Merry Christmas. You know what I mean? Like, I I get it. Merry Christmas. Very. I mean, it's like it's almost like a, a digital Christmas card. You know, Bullfrog. Thank you, brother. Brother sent me a digital Christmas card. I love you, dude. I could probably get there with my neck. Hold on a second. Let me see. Um, I'm trying. I would love to have, you know, if I had that neck, bro, I'd slap it around. Uh, just to scare people and watch it wiggle back and forth. You know? Just b whack it. Let's uh, wiggle back and forth. Woo! Just listen to it wiggle. You know what I mean? Um, At least he wasn't naked, Joe. That's a great point. You know, can you imagine if he had been naked? I mean, it, lo it looks kind of naked there. You know what we just do? Just get a fat naked guy and put it, put it, put his head on the guy, and just say he was naked. You know what I mean? Just act like, oh my God, he was naked. You know? Jesus, look at that. That's rough. Yeah, no, no, I, I would not. Of course, Rod. I mean, listen, the last time Rod did a low rating like this, 
was that they I think they played a clip show as well, right? Didn't they play a like a a reminiscent show or like a, a year in review show? You know what I mean? I think they did. I, I'm pretty sure. I mean, I could be... Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think so. I don't think so. But yeah, WWE Raw did a record low rating. I, you know, I, notice I didn't even really do a video on it today. Like, I could have put a video up earlier when I was, you know, cleaning and doing all the shit that I was doing. Um, You know, I just, you know... I was like, it's not even, it's not really that big a newsworthy shit to me, to be honest. Yo, what's up? Uh, 420, uh, Nikki, Nikki J, the weed god. Uh, appreciate that, bro. What up, uh, weed god? How are you, sir? How you doing? Um, yeah, you know, I just think that, um, I don't know, like, um, it was just so obvious that that the, they were going to set the record. Do you know what I mean? Like they were, it was so obvious that they were going to set the lowest rating ever, you know, of all time. And so I I knew that. So it was no. I didn't even feel like it's it's not even fair. You know what I mean? They wanted to let the wrestlers go spend time with their families, put on a repeat, you know, review show. You know, so I'm not even gonna. I'm not going to laugh at that like, oh, my God, it's the lowest rating ever. Of course it was. It wasn't really a show. You know what I mean? Why would I, like, make fun of that or go after them for that or, or that sort of thing? Um, You know, I'm not going to do that because it's just low-hanging fruit, and it's not really – I don't know. I just don't even think it's fair. It's just – doesn't count. Sure, it's going to be the lowest rating of all time. It wasn't a real episode, so who cares? You know, but I mean, if, if next week the real show does the lowest rating, we'll talk about it because I always talk about it when they get the lowest rating of all time, except when it's a review show like that for the most part. That's why I didn't go, you know, do a big video on it and, and talk about it earlier because I did, you know, I usually do that, but it's just a stupid, you know. I mean, I'll mention it here real quick, but it's not that big a deal to me. It's just kind of like they purposely, you know, handicap themselves which is fine because i don't mind that i'm worried about the shows that they do every week that are that are supposed to be normal that's what i'm worried about you know i'm not worried about them you know failing in a christmas review show i'm worried about what they do when they're actually live there and doing it um now they did though they, they did they ran a show at msg the other night i mean apparently i think that was the one with uh, where Bray Wyatt wrestled at. So that made a bunch of news. You know, everybody was flipping out. Oh, my God, you know, Bray Wyatt's wrestling. I mean, maybe he didn't take that much time with his family either, so he was probably one of the people that wanted to be on the road because, you know, Bray Wyatt has, like, seven families now, you know, so it doesn't really matter. It's like Tom Brady, you know. It's like, oh, you know, what's a family anymore? You know, I've got 70 different ones, you know, because, I, you know, I left my wife for JoJo, whatever the fuck it is. So, you know, he don't give a shit to be there for Christmas because, you know, why would you want to be around that drama? You know what I mean? So that's what I'm, that's, that's what I'm guessing. That's just my guess. You know? I think that, um, and I think that the wrestling news today, like I said, you know, in basically talking about how bad the wrestling news is and how terrible the wrestling topics are, you know, you can see also why they would do the worst, you know, rating of all time. And again, going back to something we didn't finish talking about, which was the uh, Mia Yim thing. Shit bomb. Oh, shit. What's your opinion so far on MJF as champion? I think he's been pretty good so far, and uh, I think he's been good. I, I hope that he keeps being a prick, and he keeps, you know, he keeps maintaining the title and cheating and and holding onto the belt. Um, you know, he kind of reminds me. 
MJF is always reminding me a little bit of the Million Dollar Man, you know, as far as like a character, a bad guy, his in-ring work a bit. Um, the only difference is MJF is the world champion now, not just the Million Dollar Champion, not just the ring champion guy. Um, he is the real world champion, so that's a little different. Obviously, I think MJF is more versatile in a way on the mic, in a, in a different way. Obviously, I think he's a little shorter, and maybe you know, maybe DiBiase was better in the ring. I don't know. It's very close, but he just kind of reminds me of that, you know. So it's kind of like to me, it's sort of like what would it be like if Ted DiBiase had been the world champion? And I think that's the way that they'll book him. I mean, he's just he's a bigger presence on the mic, though right now for this day and age. Um, and I know that's weird. I'm sure some people are like, dude, Ted DiBiase, what the fuck are you talking about? But I, I don't know, dude. He just kind of reminds me of, of, of like, you know, Ric Flair, DiBiase, kind of a mix of those guys. Like Ric, Ric Flair and DiBiase. And maybe like, you know, and, and also somebody who's got kind of like, you know, those wild promo skills, you know? Kind of like, kind of like a CM Punk meets, you know, somebody else on the mic, you know, who drops kind of like, drops kind of reality on the mic, you know, drops bombs, pipe bombs, whatever you want to say. But yeah, a little bit, a little bit of flair, a little bit of Diviasi, a little bit of um, CM Punk on the mic, a little bit of that sort of stuff, all kind of rolled into something. And so that's why I think he's good. You know, I I don't know exactly what 100% he reminds me of or what he could be, but I don't know, man. That's just um it's it's sort of what I see. And it's like you know, it's a little bit like Honky Tonk Man in a way too, although not to say he's Honky Tonk Man, but it's sort of that thing where like Honky Tonk Man held that Intercontinental Championship for so long that when the Warrior, you know, kind of showed up surprisingly and then beat him, it's that sort of thing I I see for MJF. You know, holding the belt for two years, three years, two years. And it's like he always gets out of it. He always wins. He even wins against good guys who maybe this is the good guy who's going to take over and finally win the title. But he doesn't still. MJF is still the champion. So that someday when it happens, it's like, holy shit. Like this other guy is the champion now. Holy shit. He finally, whatever. And and, and that's kind of what I hope and what I think should happen uh, for MJF. Um, you know, I know that none of you guys really know what I'm talking about. Maybe like two of you who are local to me, but for years, Ryan Waters, Ryan Waters, H2O, H2O Ryan Waters of a small promotion here in, in uh, Massachusetts, Top Row Promotions, I called wrestling for. He was the world champion of Top Row Promotions for several years, about two and a half years. He went on an amazing just title run that I loved. And, and, and if you were part of Top Row Promotions, you know, the f- maybe 500 people in the area that came and went to different shows and whatever, he had, it was so fun. It really was a very fun time. I, I would love to, to say this to anybody who watched Top Rope for those years. He would, he would just beat everybody somehow from cheating or from some kind of bullshit. He would have great programs that would lead to other programs that would lead to other matches and he get out of it every time somehow. And finally, finally, Teddy Goods finally defeated Ryan Waters for the title. It was awesome. It was so awesome when he did it. And, and that's the type of run that I want to see MJF be able to pull off. Be a bastard heel, always win for years and be this guy. And then it just kind of comes out of nowhere that finally... He loses. That type of pop, excitement, payoff, whatever you want to call it, you hope for it. And I think, you know, Honky Tonk Man with Ultimate Warrior, they pulled that off. I think several other people pulled it off over the years, but I I really think that locally that was so well done, man, and maybe only 300 people know about it out there, and maybe only 50 or 30 people, because I I don't think that many people were at every show, but I was at damn near every show because I was calling it. And, and I would say that, you know, 30 or so um, people saw how great uh, that was. 
I don't even know if we have those videos. I would love to go back in time, you know, uh, watch those matches and, and things like that because yeah. they were so good. You know, I, I had a blast. Um, and uh, there were there were a lot of, you know, great moments when uh, calling his matches and going through the years of him. And so I, that's what I want for MJF. And I and man, I'll tell you, Ryan Waters promoted most of those shows with you know Teddy Goods and some other people. Um, and uh, I want to say this is the uh, is this the ninety one? I don't know. Is this the ninety one? It finally. And so yeah, so after two years, I mean two years, Ryan Waters beat everybody. This guy, that guy, the other guy, this guy, that guy. Ryan Waters beat everybody in MJF style. And finally, he even beat Teddy Goods several times, right? So, but then eventually, you know, Teddy Goods, in the, I, you know, got another shot in in their second match of their new thing. You know, finally. And this was the payoff. This was the payoff for finally Teddy Goods, who was the mid-card champ here, to pick up the world title from Ryan Waters. This is the year, I think, six years ago now, to believe it or not. And 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 then Teddy Goods would go on being the champion for three years after this. So it really pushed Teddy Goods to being this big face with the with the area and the company. And Ryan Waters was champion for years, getting and you know, and this was the big payoff finally. And you know what's crazy is during this big payoff, after it finally happens, then there's a turn that happens that night that builds to another show. I mean, they were doing a great job at hooking people into the next show. Brandon Webb won't let him use it. Oh, he just hit. Shit bomb. I'm in the middle. On one hand, he should have the title for a long time. Right. On the other, he shouldn't have a reign as long as Romans, in my opinion. Right. Um, I know, and you know, I get that, and maybe it won't work, you know, for that long, Randy Viper, but, or Furry, I'm sorry, this is Furry Balls plopping menacingly on the table. Five bucks, thank you, sir. But, you know, um, I, I, I think he should have a long reign. I, I want to say over a year. I'd like to see a year and a half at least, if not two years. But that's if it's working. You know, if something starts to seem like it's not working anymore, you know, we can certainly change that, you know, and do some other things. But, you know, hopefully it, it works out. But let's see what the what the payoff here was like. In the head. Ryan Waters has been champion for years. Um, and here's Teddy Goods finally beating him. So Ryan Waters, two years champ. I actually lost my voice here. Brandon Webb took a heck of a shot outside the ring as well. Brandon Bay, Rickside, Referee Tony. Oh, and Goods got him. Get in there. Get in there. Running on. Two, three. He got him. He got him. Did you hear my voice, bro? I lost my, my balls went in. Do, do you know why my voice went like that, dude? Because I was that, I couldn't believe it. Like, I was, dude, I was actually blown away. You got to remember, Ryan Waters had been champion for two and a half years. And, he be, and he's beaten Teddy Goods, like, four times. He beat him several times. And he got out of it every time, and he was cheating in this one, and there was all this stuff, and I'm like, oh, he's going to cheat. You know, this is no way. And I am and I know I lost my voice, but my also my excitement was so far off the page that be, I lost my voice. So the only way to, to have a normal voice on commentary was to be a little bit chill, to be like, well, of course, Ryan, what? you know, I had to like go really low and quiet to pronunciate because I lost my voice, but I couldn't contain it there. And my and that was my only I was actually upset about this afterwards because I was like, man, the call should have been so good because it was all this years. And my voice was so like, yeah, 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 because I'd lost my voice because I was so excited. Teddy Goods! Teddy Goods! <laughs> He's the new champion! It's like Michael Cole when he loses his voice. Yes! <laughs> Bro, I, yes! Like, it's the funniest call. Like, dude, I, I had a call a month before this. 
where, where somebody won the tag titles. And I'm like, they're the new tag team champions. This is, you know, they've been waiting months. This is what, it was like a great call. This, though, is fucked because my voice is fucked. <laughs> yes! <laughs> like, dude, oh, my God, bro. Oh, my God. I lost my voice the other day, too, so I'm back to that same voice right now. We, we couldn't hear each other. So, number one, I didn't know if he was talking. I could not hear. I know that it may not sound like it over YouTube, but I could not hear my partner talking. So, I didn't know if he was talking. So, I couldn't, I wasn't sure if I wanted to keep talking because I didn't know if he was talking because it was so loud at that point in there that I couldn't hear him. Cause it, and it was amazing that Teddy Goods won here. So the, and, and I'm bringing this up as an example because this was done on a local level so well to me. And, and, and I wish that, I hope that that's what happens with MJF. He's got both now. Randy Webb's got a microphone. He's got, he got, he got a rest. He's got finally. Finally that. Finally Ryan Waters got what he deserves. This is awesome. Give it up to the shirt that it is. I mean, this, this. So he's in there with his friends. You know, we're having a good time. I mean, I, I, I really was losing it. I was actually a, a huge fan here. You know, at this point, I was really excited for him. Like, this was such a great story. Like, I will never forget this story. Like, this is up there with all all the WWE stories and all the ECW and all the years of AEW and whatever else. This is in my brain as one of a, a story in wrestling that I, I love. And only a few people know about it because it's a local thing. But, like, I loved it. Backyard wrestling. It was a great moment. Mike Mike Messier is just repeating names. <laughs> the Teddy Good says Teddy Good's like I want to thank Brickhouse Baker, and Mike Messier is like Brickhouse Baker. <laughs> my, Teddy Goods is like I want to thank Todd Jones, and then Mike Messier is like Todd Jones. <laughs> he just repeats the stuff Teddy says. This is awesome, Mike. Biff, Biff Busick. Tommaso Ciampa's record was broken by uh, him, and then uh, Teddy Goods broke uh, Biff Busick's uh, record, or Oni Lorcan, if you're a WWE fan. It was party time too, because I got I, I think I had like seven shots this night. Which at the time for me was was a lot because I didn't expect to be drinking that night, but I had to party with everybody. Oh wait a minute, what the hell? What the hell's going on? What the hell just happened? What the hell's going on? See and and, and, and they literally just told a story. Ryan Waters Evil heel champion for like two years. Can never lose the belt. Always oh, talking trash. Whatever. He beats he finally loses to Teddy Goods. Epic. Everyone's excited. It's it's a whole culmination. Teddy Goods would go on to be champion for like three years after this. But in that same night, his friends now turn on him because of course he's the mid card champion. And he's the world champion of top rope promotions. And these guys don't have any belts. And now they turn on him. Ryan Waters is stepping away from wrestling for a little bit, injuries and things like that. And they get right to another story. And hey, guess what? We'll see you in Brockton, Mass. 
in uh, 25 days. Find out what's going to happen. And a lot of these people went to Brockton then from Fall River to see the show because it was, it was interesting on a local level. What the heck just happened? Wait a minute. This was Teddy Good's moment. What is- I, I've lost my voice here. It's unreal. Mike Messier, dude, say it isn't so. Dude, Mike Messier. You know who Mike Messier reminds me on commentary? And by the way, I told him, I was like, dude, never put me on with Mike Messier unless I'm going to be heel. Let me be the heel commentator because the two of us are just doing the same face, you know, color or face play by play. I was like, no, I was like, next time, let me just let me be heel. And, and, I, and I was heel one other time because I said, hey, you know what? You call it normal, and I'm going to be the color guy who says crazy shit. And I love that. I have that on DVD, and it's very funny. It's very funny. But <laughs> say it ain't so. You know, he sounds like, you know, he sounds like Mike. If you're listening, Mike, what's up? I love Mike. Um, he sounds like Harry Carey. <laughs> you know, say it ain't so. Oh, oh. oh no. Now, you can literally, in this moment, hear two different styles of commentary and decide which one you like more or like both of us or whatever. But you got me who's like, you know, like I'm flipping out. Like, I'm like, what the hell? Like, I'm getting upset. But my, and Mike is, is, Mike is doing this like, say it isn't so. (laughs) Like, it's just two different styles, like on top of each other. He did. Teddy Goods just spent like 10 minutes on the microphone. I skipped over it. And he's like, you guys have been my best friends since day one here. It means so much to be in the ring with you. You know, that sort of thing. So it's a great little turn here. (laughs) This is no way to treat a friend. Yeah, no shit. (laughs) Oh, Mike. <laughs> I love Mike, bro. He cracked me up. But I can never tell when he was commentating versus uh, me uh, commentating. Because I couldn't hear what he was saying. You know what I mean? It was like I couldn't hear him. Um, <laughs> Say it isn't so. Andy, there's, uh, there's a boy who's drowning in the river down the street. Somebody save him. Lassie's falling into the river again. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know bro. Super chat party. Oh, shit. Randy Viper. Good morning, Joel. Happy New Year. Happy New You. Happy New You. I can't wait. It's only a few days away. Maybe I'll throw up on my wife in a couple of days. How you doing, Randy Viper? I salute you, sir. Thank you for the $2 super chat. Happy New You, sir. Happy New You. If there was something we were supposed to get to, please someone remind me because I, I don't remember now. You know something? You too. It's me, Don Knotts, and I'm masturbating. You all have decided oh my to God. take your hard-earned oh my money God. and to fund my show, to fund what I do, to fund what I believe in, to fund my godly ass. JCS Army. Oh, it shall! Donate to me. It's time to donate, 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 donate. Acknowledge me. Wow. Shell is back. (laughs) Hey, Joe and Chat. I never thought that I would say this, but wrestling for me is dead and buried. I only keep up to date by listening to you, Joe, otherwise I couldn't give a shit tbh. Oh, I just wanted to let you know I'm back on Patreon $25. Oh shit, Shell is a producer again. Shell, thank you so much for becoming a producer again. Hey, listen guys, tonight live on AEW Dynamite, 
I am going to unveil the new $25 Patreon producers tier, uh, the picture, you know what I mean, the, the uh, graphic for this month, for the month of January and December. So, guys, if you are going to support the channel and you want to become a $25 producer, I will have your name below my videos going forward, and I will have a uh, graphic with you on it as well. Also, Shell, thank you for coming back as a producer. Uh, Todd Fair is back as a $100 uh, supporter. Um, and now we're going to get to the drama, I guess, of uh, the comments. Everyone lies, Mon, and a couple other people sent me this clip. I will respond to it. I don't think it's a big deal. I think the guy doesn't know anything about anything. Um, but we'll listen to what he says. It's wrong. I've already heard the clips. It's obviously incorrect. I would love to play it. Let's hear the clip. I don't know who this guy is, but let's listen to it. Oh, man, like, stay, stay. People got gangbanging. Listen, I'm going to tell you all something really. That WWE community is fucking wicked. Like, they all were fucking with that Keith dude. And I'm now he's talking about Keith. He's talking about Keith, the guy who came on the show a long time ago. Do you guys remember Keith came on the show like back in 2015? We had, we had callers all the time, and Mr. Maps, yeah, was one of the guys that called the show. So I guess this is what the guy's talking about. I don't know. For all I know, the guy who sent me this clip is the guy who told them these lies about me. I don't. I don't know. I'm not saying Tony was even. Oh, he name drops that guy. So maybe that guy is the one who told them bullshit or something i don't know even like like six years ago six years ago they're fucking with that keith dude and that keith was talking about yo i was 20 years old fucking with a 14 and a and a, dude all oh. this nasty ass shit right so i don't want to hear anything from the wwe community the way i look at it a lot of you motherfuckers over there are disgusting so Is that a, i agree with them on that wrestling community i was gonna say yeah, yeah, what the fuck? yeah bro <clears throat> really yeah what the fuck well, yeah, dude, they don't want me to make a documentary on the whole WWE community because I fucking will. Don't fuck with I me, bro. Need... Oh, no, we're scared. I think you need to. I need to know more. Bro, all right, we'll start with Joe Cronin, and I'll work my way all the way down to fucking Dave Rose and all that shit. And I'll tell uh. you right now, it is fucking weird. All of it's weird. Mm -hmm. So this guy's an idiot, right? Because and now he may be misinformed, too. I don't know. Maybe he's not an idiot. Maybe he's a good guy, and he's misinformed. So I take that back if he's misinformed. Because, I mean, who doesn't want to call out pedos? You know what I mean? You should. So th this guy, Keith, called our show back in 2015 or 16 or whatever year it was. He called the show several times, like two or three times. Then one time he, he said that he, had, he was a criminal for something. Well, Jake DeMarco looked him up and found out he was like a pedophile, right? He's got an arrest history. He was then banned from the show. Now, I thought it was a lie. I didn't even think it was real. I was like, you're really serious. Once we found out that the guy was really that, he, was, he had done something weird, never allowed back on the show. However, he would go on to go on people's shows who bashed me. So he would go on people's shows who bashed me. Shows with like 15 or 20 people listening, including Scott and... Other people like that and other people's shows everywhere. It's Tony, other people like that. Why are all these other people? And they would bash me all the time, including Keith. He would bash me, say I wasn't funny anymore. I suck. I'm shitty. I'm a terrible person. I've got all the clips. I've got all the clips of them all talking shit about me. All because I got rid of him from my show because he pulled his dick out in front of little girls. So I'm actually the one that exposed that. Or I'm not the one, but... Jake is. Jake DeMarco exposed this. So when this guy says that I have a sick community and then I'll start with Joe and he's a sick, weird person, you are incorrect because I'm the one who literally exposed him and got rid of him from my channel. Now, all these other people who are probably telling you about this are the ones who actually have hung out with the guy for years. Several people I know. They've wanted to buy him hookers, be friends with him. I mean, I've got clips of everybody loving this guy. Loving him. Loving him. Tons of people. And all these people have nothing really to do with me. This is not the WWE community. It's not my community. These are all fucking trolls or haters or just weirdo sick fucks. And they're all weird fucks. So 
I, you know, again, this clip was sent to me. I don't think this guy even knows. He has no viewers. He's on, like, Twitch with 10 people. I don't know. It was sent to me. I think he's misunderstood. Somebody probably lied to him or told him that, oh, look, look, this guy, look, he, this guy's a pedophile, and he was on Joe's show. It's like, no, yeah, he was on the show when we didn't know he was. You dumb fuck. You know what I mean? Like, it, we, he wasn't on the show, like, when we knew he was. If we had known that, he wouldn't have been on the show. And all this is on YouTube for you to see. Like, you can literally go back and watch these shows. This would be like if police arrested a killer, right? Imagine if the police arrested a killer, right? A murderer. They arrested the guy. And then someone made a video that was like, cops are working with a killer. Do you know what I mean? Like, I mean, come on, bro. You know what I mean? Um, so I'm the one who got, I'm the one who actually, you know, Jake DeMarco rather is, and me are the ones who literally figured this out. And then we're like, yo, we're done with you. You know what I mean? And people shit on me for years for not having the guy on the show. So, you know, again, like, but this is what people do. So what are you, what are you going to do? You know what I mean? It's all on YouTube for you to see. If you want to see it, it's all on YouTube. But, you know, like, like I said, it's easy to go watch the videos. The videos are up right now. You can literally go watch us. You can watch us discover it live on the, on, on the show. And then you can see that the guy never was on the show again. It's not hard. But I, I, do, ha I do have the guy on other people's shows for years and years and years. The very same people that probably lied to this guy about it. So I appreciate the, the clips from the troll person, who's probably the person who told this guy this. And, uh, yep. But so it's really not a big deal. It's nothing really to get upset about. It doesn't bother me, bro. So if you're if you're being honest that you're like, oh, man, I was just trying to look out for you, Joe, or whatever, it doesn't really bother me, bro. Because, the the I mean, the truth is on my videos. It's all on my videos. There's no videos of... You know what I mean? The guy was banned off the show. So it's really not a big deal. I all, all my videos are up. They're still up. I don't do that anymore. I don't do that anymore. I can do a good impression of him, though. I can do a good impression of the guy. But yeah. Imagine that. Imagine if you caught somebody doing something bad and you called it out. But then years later, people were like, you hung out with, it's like, what the fuck are you talking about? It's just funny, bro. It's like you actually are the one that caught the predator and then you get called a predator for catching the predator. <laughs> like we caught the predator and we're in trouble for catching the predator. Come on. Six, seven years ago. We're the ones that discovered this about the guy. And then all these people continue to hang out with the guy who bashed me. All these people who bashed me hung out with the guy for years. They're not part of my community. They are not part of my community, dude. My community is right here in my chat. Anybody from whatever that is is not from my community, you know? And whatever this guy's problem is with Dave Rose, I don't know. But I know that, you know, Dave has his own things going on with people. I don't know. Um... I don't know, bro. I'm not. I, you let Dave talk about that. Maybe tonight on AEW review, he'll talk about it. Um, but I don't know. I don't. I have no problem with this guy's probably misinformed. It's not even that big a deal. Like I said, he's misinformed. Somebody probably lied to him. Told him like, "Oh, this is you know, you know." It's like, nah, bro. That guy was on three of my shows, and the third time when we found out what he was, we got rid of him. You know. Meanwhile, all these people have been hanging out with him every year, every fucking month. You know, so it's like, I mean, dude, but he is right that the rest of the community of there is a community of psychos out there. I mean, that's definitely true. But come on, bro. <laughs> Yo, Shell, thank you uh, for becoming a twenty five dollar producer. But there you go. There's the I guess that's the clip you wanted me to review. So there you go. I don't think it's a big deal. I don't care. And it's not really a it's not really a big deal. 
the guy's misinformed. What are you going to do? You know, I don't really care that much. Um, he is right that the there is a community of sick ass people out there, but I think he might be the one involved in. Do a little <laughs> basketball dance off the concrete. I mean, I'm just so sick of you little meth head devil worshippers. I'll be honest, I'd like to take a big bite out of your face. Came to Popo. The general has arrived after his hiatus. I am back with a vengeance. 2023 will be the year of the Filipinos. Oh. All you beat tech Mexicans bow down to the Sigma Filipinos. Oh I had God. no issues chasing AJ Adams away. Mexican. <laughs> Mexicans are next. What the fuck? General Santos uh, dropping the $3. Yeah, I remember when we had to get Stacy out of here, too. Yeah. I was the one who brought that up, too, and I got buried for that. That's the funny thing, dude. I get You're fucked no matter what you do. Dude, I'll never forget that. I, I, I figured out what was up with him. I called it out on my show, and then everyone shit on me for it. Like, several people uh, tried to shit on me for it. Like, you know, Joe's an asshole. And then a few weeks later, or months later, whatever it was, then people were suddenly calling him out for the same thing. And suddenly it was like, oh, they're the ones that called it out. But, like, I just called it out, like, <laughs> and been in trouble for it. So, dude, I, I can't win. I'm always, like... You're always wrong if you do, wrong if you don't, wrong if whatever. But basically what I do is the second I find out, they're just gone. You know what I mean? I don't care if people don't like me because I got rid of somebody. If I find out that, you know, you're like a fucking weirdo or something like that, you know, and you're gone, you're gone and you're gone. Whatever. You know, it's like, dude, hey, whatever. You know, I'm the one who's in trouble for being the first one to boot them out. I'm the one that's in trouble years later for having booted them out. Come on. You know, it's it's ridiculous. But I, I it is fun though. I appreciate it. I appreciate that uh you know, I mean who I mean, who spends the time trying to lie about somebody like this? People spend more time trying to lie about me than you can believe. But the funny thing about it is you can just go look it up on YouTube. It's on YouTube for you to see. You can literally go look at the videos. They're still up, Luke Rojas. They're up. And we mention it all the time, like, yep, he he was banned. It was a long time ago. Nobody else banned him, but I did. I think JB banned him too, actually. But, you know, what are you going to do? Who cares? You can't do anything about people making stuff up about you. You know what I mean? You just kind of laugh about it. Or you take him to court on defamation if it's really a purposeful lie. Um, but, you know, that's not that level. You know, it's just stupid somebody's wrong is all it is which is fine fuck you up with a broomstick who fuck you up with a broomstick <laughs> fuck you with a broomstick brother <sighs> oh god feed me omega all right well i will uh you know right back i will have to uh i will have to feed you right back dude I gotta be honest. No, they're, they're no Rojas. Well, maybe, but no, I got a lot of them, Rojas, because once after the YouTube uh, changed the rules a little bit, I was able to bring them back, uh, Rojas. So a lot of those videos are back. So no, I have them all. I have all the videos, bro. So no, I've got them all. I've got um, some of them might be a lot of them might be private, but I can unprivate them easily. You know what I mean? Like, I've got, no, I've got all the old school shit. I can unprivate a lot of them. Which I do have to do soon. Because, one, one, yeah, once YouTube changed their shit, you know what I mean? I, um, I brought, I tried to bring everything back that I could. So I'm working on restoring as many as I can. So, yeah, they, they'll be back at some point. Um, for you, for you to be able to watch, you know what I mean? I want everybody to be able to watch everything, you know? But yeah, it's easy to do. But hey, man, we're going to get ready. Uh, AEW Dynamite's coming on in a little bit later. Uh, yeah, Rojas, I'll take calls if you want to call, bro. Go ahead, Rojas. Go ahead and call me, Rojas. You always call me on my cell phone. Unless you want to be on AEW Review tonight, we can talk then. But I'll take you on for like five minutes. And then, you know, I'm going to go... Uh, clean up and do some things and then get ready for AEW and then be here live for the Dynamite Review tonight. 
Just remember, guys, you may not get the alert that I'm live tonight because I've been live here now. So just look for me. As soon as AEW Dynamite ends, I'll be live right here. So make sure you guys are here, too, if you want to be here for that. Um, so, yeah. Rojas, if you want. Shit bum. I'll take you five minutes. Have you heard of the catastrophic contagion? It's the next pandemic coming 2025 targets. Kids Bill Gates is a demon. I bet you it is. And I bet you Gates did it. He's buying up all the farmland, right? So that when the food shortages happen, you have to like go through Gates. Gates is going to gatekeep the food. Get it? You know what I mean? I get it. I get it. Uh, Hello. Luke? Yeah, I can. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Hey, AJ Adams, thank you for that five dollars. Now get a father. Um, no, AJ Adams, thank you. Uh, what's up, Luke? I just wanted to say like Merry Christmas and stuff, and uh, <laughs> and a Happy New Year, wherever the fuck, because uh, you know, um, your Christmas tree looks great. Know. Anyway, I'm because probably because I'm not going to call in tonight because I don't watch AEW. Oh know? yeah, yeah. I Every time you. I do, I always I always end up bringing up WWE and Dave Rose wants to murder me and my family and calls me a stupid moron and you know because I'm living in a fantasy or something. So you know, <laughs> I'm just gonna. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, that's all I really wanted to say. That's it. All right. Well, listen, man. Merry Christmas. I love you, bro. And we will do – we got to do a show. We got to do a little podcast soon. Yeah, and fuck Jacob RP because he sucks. Yeah, he has he is a, he's a, he has no life. He lives with his parents. Um, but, no, yeah, yeah, dude, like maybe maybe we'll do something uh, later. I don't know. Thank you, Luke Ro- Rojas. Luke Rojas calling in. Thank you to Shell. Thank you to Allison Takwa. For dropping the bombs earlier. AJ Adams for the five bucks there. And uh, Shell for the donation and for becoming a $25 producer again. I am going to head out and I will be back tonight live for the AEW Dynamite review. That will be sexy. You'll be sexy. I'll be sexy. And uh, that's it, man. I think I covered everything everybody wanted me to talk about in the chat. I even covered a tr- what a troll wanted me to talk about. A troll hit me up and I still talked about it. Alex, Raw was amazing. Highest record and rating ever, yeah. Um, listen, it was, a, it was a repeat, you know, rewind show. I knew it was going to suck. We all knew it was going to do the lowest rating of all time. We knew it because it was a worthless show that you didn't have to watch. I didn't even do a review. You know it was worthless. I didn't do a review, and I'm justified. Lowest rating ever. I did no review. Why would you review a show that's a review of the year? You know, I just don't get it. What a waste of time to do that. So no big deal. Let's see what they do next week. Probably not too good. But WWE Raw is going downhill. Eh, all right? It has nothing to do with the review show. It has to do with every week the show is just no good. Unfortunately. A four, unfortunately. It's just bad. But it is what it is. What are you going to do? I'll see you tonight for the Dynamite review. I'm looking forward to AEW being good tonight or good enough that I have something to actually talk about. And I can have some fun tonight on the AEW you raised a piece of shit. Dynamite Review. The dingo ate my baby wings. Oh, my God. Dennis Eckersley's daughter is allegedly claiming a dingo ate the baby. I don't think so. They've taken baby into custody. Shout out to Allison Tuckwab and her Green Bay Packers. The Green Bay Packers somehow <laughs> beating the Dolphins. Dolphins fans are, I feel bad for Himmelgod. Himmelgod's favorite two teams played each other, for Christ's sake. So I feel bad for him. Anyway, I will catch you guys tonight after AEW Dynamite for the AEW Dynamite review. I'm Joe Crone. Hit the like button down below if you can. We're almost at 100 likes, and I will see you tonight live. And if you're on Patreon, you will get the alert on Patreon that I'm live. Even if YouTube doesn't alert you, you'll get an email alert on Patreon that I'm live tonight. I'll see you tonight for that. Until then, keep it hard.
Europe with a blue stick. I just might fuck her. I'm gonna gargle your piss. Oh, welcome to the desk. Thank you very much, Taz. Hello, sir. Mr. Shivani. Hello. Man in the mask. <laughs> How are you today? Doing quite well, you sir. Little creme brulee, you. <laughs> I'd like to crack you and let you just melt in me. I would, honestly. Already. Oh. Yikes. We're rocking and rolling. Little up. creme brulee, you. I told you we're starting out hot, guys. <laughs> we really oh. are. <laughs> well, here we go. You just made the list. Biggest, most jacked guy, and please let me come. You just made the list. When I plan to act pompous. Oh. God, feed me Omega. Biggest, most jacked guy, and please let me come.
Awesome. Me more. Yeah, feed me more. Let's go. Let's go. Turn my microphone up. Turn my headphones up. Turn my fucking headphones up. Where's a picture of me? Put a picture of me on the fucking screen right now. Come on, do it. I swear to God. You're gonna fucking rue the day that you talked about me, Joe Cronin. And I'm gonna seriously fucking crush your skull. Do you understand me? Yeah. What's that? What's that? It's the right back rap. What's that? What's that? Who's that? Yo, it's the right back rap. What's that? Yo, who's that? What's that? Yo, it's the right back rap. What's that? Get out the way. You're probably gay. Right back rap. How about that? I push your head into the mat and it goes flat. You're not ready for this shell shock. And you got a tiny cock. It's the right back rap. Right back rap. I'm not talking crap. So how about that? I get the right back rap. Right back rap. So top talking shit, you're full of crap. Finish it. Finish this. Finish it. You're a bitch. You're a bitch. Yo. Yo, it's the right back rap. You talking crap? Go to Amazon and buy my stash. The right back rap. I'm gonna crush your skull in a pit of spikes. It's the right back rap. Amen. 